Okay, so hello, I'm uh, Devin Jean. I'm working with Vanderbilt University, and today we'll be covering uh, Phone IoT, which is a project we've been working on for teaching IoT and some network communication and distributed programming to uh, K-12 audiences. So to begin with, uh, sort of the reason that we wanted to start this project originally was that we can cover some IoT education without needing dedicated hardware. Uh, like some, like a lot of the IoT things that we might hear about are like, for instance, like smart, et cetera, like smart insert anything. Like uh, there are smart manhole covers that monitor like gas levels or sewage levels and everything. And there are a lot of remote sensors uh, of that sort of variety that uh, are used in, in industrial applications, but they all require some kind of specialized hardware. So we want to use smartphones and tablets and that sort of thing because they actually have a lot of built-in sensors that we might not even think about. There are some obvious ones like uh, GPS location, which is used for like Google Maps and directions. There's the accelerometer that controls like auto screen rotation. So that's pretty much present in all devices. There's also microphone and camera. And then also a lot of times there's like a geomagnetic field sensor or, or in general, some kind of orientation sensor so it can tell which way it's going. And you can usually use these kinds of things as a compass among other things. So we've made an app for both I, um, iOS and Android that you can install on your device and connect it to NetsBlocks, which is a block-based environment we'll be looking into more later. Um, so inside of NetsBlocks, once you connect your device to the server, all you, um, <clears throat> the sensors on the device, okay. okay. The sensors in the device are available in a few different ways. So we have in NetsBlocks a thing called RPCs, which are remote procedure calls. And they're done with this call block right here, which basically just uh, you specify a specific service that you want to invoke and then a function to run on the server. And then you give it the uh, parameters. So for connecting to the IoT, uh, phone IoT devices, we have a service called phone IoT. And then for instance, you can get explicit on-demand request for the sensor values with uh, Git Accelerometer is one example. So you can see it here, just phone IoT, Git Accelerometer. You pass it the device ID, which is needed to connect. We'll see more about that later. And it just gives you the instantaneous value. Another commonly used IoT technique for getting your data out of your devices on the network is actually a sensor streaming strategy where you, you just request the data every so and so often, and it'll just send you messages that you can receive. So in NetsBlocks, we actually have a really convenient primitive to do this already, which is the sending message, receiving message. And you can do that. Uh, you can receive the messages with a when I receive block, and they'll actually be sent from the phone itself. Uh, so to get those messages, all you have to do is use the listen to sensors RPC, and then specify a list of sensors that you want to listen to and the update period that you want to receive the messages for. So for this example, you would receive accelerometer updates every 500 milliseconds, and then you just receive them here, and it breaks it down into x, y, and z fields. So those are the, the two main ways that you can access sensor data. And they parallel pretty nicely with the commonly used ones in actual industrial application IoT. And so because it's an app, and it's going to be running on the, in the foreground of the device anyway. You have access to the entire screen, which starts out blank, but you can populate it with custom controls. Like over here, I just have like a sample. There are two joysticks in the bottom. There's a text box, some toggle switches, buttons, image displays. And then you can, you can populate these controls and customize them. You can rotate them to landscape, all sorts of things. And they can even send messages to the server. So you can run arbitrary code as like an event-oriented system. Uh, event-based system. And so not to get too into the nitty gritty of how everything works, but just a general overview of what's going on is uh, you have the NetsBlocks client, which is basically a browser running NetsBlocks. And then you have the phone IoT app over here on the right, uh, which actually has the sensor values. So the blocky arrows are basically synchronous from the perspective of the NetsBlock client. So if you do an explicit RPC request, it just sends a synchronous request to the server which then forwards it over to the phone. The phone sends back data. 
and the server converts it into an event that you receive. And then also we have these uh, dynamic arrow, this dynamic arrow going over from the phone IoT device. So GUI events and sensor streaming. So basically just asynchronous things. They'll just be sent over to the server and those are also turned into events that you can receive, which is uh, what we saw over here with uh, the receiving accelerometer updates. So specifically, one of the projects that we're going to start out with today is the avoid the holes game or the drop game. It's basically going to be a little thing that uses the accelerometer on your device to control a ball rolling around. And uh, that'll just be a brief introduction to getting sensor values. And then we can also play around with some of the custom controls, although we probably won't make it look exactly like this just in the, the shorter time that we have today. So to begin with, what we're going to need everybody to do, if you want to follow along interactively, is download the Phone IoT app. It's actually just uh, P-H-O-N-E-I-O-T, all one word. It's available on Android and iOS, so you should just be able to look it up in the App Store. So yeah, if everyone can try to, if you want to follow along, you can uh, try to install that app and uh, let me know in, in the chat if, if you get it set up and everything or if you have any troubles installing it or finding it. Also, let us know if there are any questions. I mean, I know if some people got here late, it sounds like there were some issues with the SnapCon website. Oh, oh yeah, I'm just now seeing that, yeah. Yeah, so just any questions anyone has, just as we, we get everybody set up here. Yeah, and feel free to uh, feel free to put your uh, questions in the chat if you don't want to just speak out loud. Oh, uh, well, in the Google Play Store, it should still be the same name, Phone IoT, P H O N E I O T. We found out from uh, a different thing that we did yesterday that it could be dependent on your region. Uh, it, the app may not, might not be available just because of how uh, Google Play does some licensing or legal issues. But it, anywhere in the US, it should be available. And I think, I think most other places, but we, 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 haven't, we don't have too much information on that right now. Oh, yes, yeah, that, that is an I. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, the font is uh, sans serif. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I guess uh, anyone, if you're still having issues, just put it in the chat, and then uh, I guess I can move on now to an example of the drop game. So this is basically the finished product that we'll be working on right now. And it's just, uh, you can see I can, uh, I can just, con it is still screen sharing, right? I don't see the green outline. Um, anyway, yeah, I can just tilt the device around, try to put the device in the, in my camera, but it's, I can just tilt it around and you can see like just vaguely the controls are on there and you can manipulate it around. There's a new game button to restart the game in case you get stuck. So I guess from now we'll just go right into the starter project. So let me go ahead and open that. Okay, and then I'll just put this in the chat. Okay, so I just put a link to the starter project and that'll just give you most of the project code that you have, all of that, well, ac actually exactly what you see here, but it'll include all of the core game logic, but none of the phone IoT specific features, which is what we'll be adding. So you should just be able to open that project up. It'll bring you into NetsBlocks already open in the editor. Okay, so to begin with, we're just gonna be on a stage. You can click around in this area uh, to get to the different script areas, but we'll be in the stage. So first of all, the new game 
uh, event will actually trigger the, uh, trigger the game to start. So we'll just drag that down here because we don't need it for now. But we can go over here to communicate with the device. If you have your, your app open over here, you'll see uh, in the menu, and you can, you can open it with the button at the top left. But there's an there's a area right here called device ID. You'll actually need that to communicate with your device. And uh, if you're trying to follow along, enter your specific ID uh, uh, rather than mine, because then you'll just be overriding what I'm doing. So we can just make a new variable called, oh, that's, yeah, if you go over to variables, make a variable, and you can just type, I, I'll just call it device. Oh, and I should probably make this, uh, make this bigger. Okay, so still on the stage. So you can just go over here, set the device to whatever your ID is. Okay, so then we can just hide that. Uh, okay, so then we'll go it's over to. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, so if we just go down here, we grab a run block from the networking tab, which is right down here. And so the first one we just switched over to the phone IoT service. And to connect to the device, we'll need to go to set credentials. Now we can just go back to variables, drag over the device. ID that we just set over here. And in that same menu on the where you saw device ID right under it, there's a password. That's a, that's an added security layer uh, if you want to use it. But by default, it'll just start out as zero. So you can just put zero here. There's a new password button down lower if you want to reset it. But for this, it'll just be easier to use zero. Uh, so this will uh, connect to the device and set the credentials. And now we can actually start asking the phone to do things. So if we go down Kevin, to <clears throat> if I If I may interrupt for a second, right? Oh, so okay. I assume that not everybody is familiar with NETS blocks. So in this network tab, uh, the call and the run blocks are invoking what we call remote procedures. So uh, we call them RPCs, remote procedure calls. So basically what's happening there is that here you can issue a request uh, to run this code and that code will run on the server and it will do something, right? So as you see in this run block, there are two pull down menus. The one uh, on the, the first one is what we call the services. So similar functions, similar RPCs are grouped together into services. And here is the list of services that, that NetBlox uh, currently supports. And one of them is of course phone IoT. And once you select a service like phone IoT, then the second menu reconfigures and shows you all the available RPCs or remote functions uh, on the server. And of course, today we are focusing on phone IoT. So phone IoT as a service, it has a bunch of RPCs. One of them is this set credentials where you basically register yourself with the device. But what's happening as, as, as uh, Devin showed in his architecture diagram that most of you missed because of the uh, connection issues is that uh, the, re the request uh, or the client request uh, to run this RPC and that uh, then the server in turn will connect the phone and, and make sure that, uh, that everything is okay, uses the phone, I, a phone ID to, to connect to the correct phone and so on and so forth. All right, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on RPCs and how this whole thing works in the background before we uh, continue with the details on the phone IoT. Right. Yeah, and uh, specifically in the menu in the phone IoT area, when you click connect, that's actually establishing this part of the connection where phone IoT connects, uh, the app connects to the server, and then the client actually connecting to the server. So you can do the interchange is what you do with set credentials right here. So it just establishes uh, everybody's talking to the server and it'll just route requests between everything. Okay. So now that we've set the credentials and we basically have a handshake and can communicate, we can go back down to phone IoT and we can go down to listen to sensors. That's in that uh, just first area. It's not in any of these drop downs. So just listen to sensors right here. So you can duplicate, you can right click and duplicate any blocks that you need. So I just duplicated device, put it down there. 
Oh, the Netsblock server is actually uh, already running. You, uh, just whenever you go to editor.netsblocks.org, your client will automatically connect to it. So we'll all be using the same server. You don't need to run anything on your system. Yeah. OK, so the sensors. Uh, this is actually a list of sensors that you want to listen to. But actually, each sensor needs a, a frequency that you want to get updates on. So it's actually a list of lists. So like right here, we can say accelerometer. And let's say we want to listen to it every 100 milliseconds. So this is basically the value that you would pass if you want to listen to the accelerometer uh, specifically. But the sensor's input is actually a list of these. So you just put that list inside another list. And the, the logic here is that you could listen to multiple sensors and you would have just another list right here that's uh, just a pair that's uh, a name and an update value. But we'll just have one of those right here. You can use these little left and right black arrows if you need more values. Okay, so if it looks just like that, you should just be able to click this and you'll start receiving uh, accelerometer updates. Uh, however, like we said in the, um, in this little presentation here, to actually receive the events, you need to use this uh, when I receive. And you need to have the correct message type, and it'll have the fields and everything. So these are these x, y, and z values. So if we go back over to this project, we can grab in the network tab a when I receive block. Uh, but you see there's nothing in this dropdown because we actually have to make a message type for it. So still in the network tab, if you go down here to the bottom, there's make a message type. So the message type that accelerometer sends is also called accelerometer. And then you just have the fields that you want to give it. It'll send you an X, Y, and Z component, but for this game, we just need the X and Y parts. So we can just specify X and Y, and the Z will just be basically discarded. And then just uh, double check that you spelled it correctly here and that there's no, no spaces anywhere. If you have a space like at the end, it'll show up as a little red circle. So just don't have any of those. OK, so now you can see uh, accelerometer shows up here as a drop down menu option. We're actually going to move over to the ball sprite uh, where we're actually going to be doing the movement logic. And we'll put that over here. So when I receive accelerometer, and we can just go over to the looks tab and uh, grab this say block from the looks tab. And we'll just put like the X value, for instance, and we can just put it right there. And that'll just, uh, that, that's just a little demo so we can know that it's working. So if I hold the device uh, level like this, it should be around zero, or, although <clears throat> you, you can't really hold it perfectly steady. And if you rotate it to the side, or maybe it's the other direction. Yeah, if you rotate, rotate it this way, you'll start getting negative values. And then this way will be pot or oh, it's hard to tell which axis it's going on. Oh, there's uh, there's messages queued up right here. That's the issue. Yeah, because the, the save block is a little bit slow. So messages will start building up and that makes it seem slower. So we'll just detach that for now. Uh, and this that might be worse just because multiple people are using it at the same time. OK, so we'll just get rid of that. We were just doing it to show that it was working. If you just grab a save block and then delete the value inside of it and click on that, that'll just get rid of the thing that was saying something. Do we need to reconnect the start code? Oh, for the, the new game, this thing? Uh, we will need to do that for the finished, uh, finished project, but uh, right now we're just focusing on getting the um, just getting the messages received. Because I didn't get any messages, and I assume it was because we didn't execute the sequence of blocks that sets the device ID and so forth. Oh, right. Sorry. Did I not demo that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is under when green flag clicked. So you just have to click the green flag up here, or you can click on the blocks right here to run them. Got it. Sorry, you may have said that, and I missed it. Oh, I might have, I might have accidentally run it and then just noticed it was working and forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah, so just if you're not getting any messages, just uh, click on this green flag. It should start working. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then once you're receiving messages, we can continue on. So, yeah, let me know if anyone's not receiving messages. It's really easy to mistype the device ID, all those, I don't know, 16 hexadigits or something. 
Right, yeah, the device ID, that's easy to get wrong. If you happen to, to click the new password button, it's, it's easy to get that one wrong as well, which is why I like to leave it at zero for the demos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the, the, the message type name. I pushed uh, connect on the phone and it said connected, but it didn't change to any other screen. And oh. I'm not getting input from it. Uh, yeah, so when you when you connect to the device, if it's already connected, the, the button at the top left, you can just click that to get rid of the menu. Uh, and these, these controls are just there from a previous execution. So it should just be like a, a blank screen that says add controls. It's not something like add controls to from Netsblocks or something. But uh, are you getting the uh, accelerometer values? No. Oh, OK. So on that one, uh, you might need to go back into the menu and click this little uh, reset connection button. Uh, Done. It, it's, a fun, it's a little funny thing because we that wasn't required yesterday, but something changed and we're not sure why. And But the, it, it wasn't working this morning, but the reset connection button seemed to fix it, at least for me. So hopefully that'll get it for you. It would make me feel better if someone else in the group said that it works for them. Yeah, has anyone got it working? Can you go back to the um, stage code? Oh, sure. Oh, okay, so at least one person has it working. Okay. Um, I seem to miss where you create uh, the accelerator meta message. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so if you don't see it in this when I receive dropdown, you'll need yeah. to in the networking tab, it's uh, right down here, make a message type. Ah, okay. And then you Good. can just call it accelerometer and give it X and Y. Yep, thanks. And there's the these things if you need more values. Yeah, so hopefully the, the re reset connection button will will sort things out. Uh, not for me, but that's okay. This is fascinating. Please carry on. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. It, it might be a bug on our side, and we'll have to figure that out, but yeah. Okay. More likely a mistake on my end, but that's fine. Yeah. Oh, uh, you did get the message at the bottom of the screen. It said, like, connected to Netsblocks. Yeah, it, like one of those uh, toast things a little appeared briefly and then went oh, away yeah. after a second or so. Yeah. Yeah, if you got that, it should be working. So there's something weird going on. Yeah, we can we can figure that out later, hopefully. Okay. But uh, yeah, just you know, hypothetically, if it's working, and it sounds like it's working for some other people, we can we can go on. So the the next part that we'll need to be doing is uh, actually using the x and y values that we're receiving from the accelerometer to move the ball around. So for that. Uh, we're going to do something really basic, which is just basically assigning the x and y values to the velocity of the ball. So Netsblocks doesn't have really a way built in, or Snap, which uh, Netsblocks is an extension of Snap, doesn't have velocity built in. So you actually kind of have to keep track of velocity and then move it every now and then as a function of time. So we'll just make two, uh, some new variables, uh, one called uh, velocity x, which I'll just shorthand as vel x. And you can do that up here in the variables tab, make a variable. So then we can do another one for velocity y. So then I'll just go down here and I'll do velocity x. And I can drag down this x value from the one I receive. And then we can go down here, set velocity y to the y component, and then just snap these in. And then now you should be, because we have these, uh, these watchers uh, variable watchers that are constantly showing the value. So you should actually see it moving around now if I rotate the device and kind of just going in a circle. Okay, but we can hide those by unchecking their boxes next to the variable tab on the left. So now that we actually have the velocity, we just need to actually move the ball around. So for that, we can go down into the control blocks over here and we'll just grab a forever loop because we're just going to want it to keep going all the time. Um, 
let's see. Oh, and a little, a little tiny bit of wait time. Uh, very small amount, but we just don't want it to be running constantly. Yeah, you know, just small time, 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, almost a no op. And then from there, we go into the motion tab and we'll want to get some of these blocks down here, change X by and change Y by. So here we can uh, go over and get our uh, velocity X and velocity Y values. So we'll just get these, pop them over here. And we can just click on these this uh, forever loop to start it running. Now, if you do this, you'll, you'll notice that um, the ball is actually going in the opposite direction that we would expect. Like if I, if I tilt it to the right, it goes left. If I tilt it to the left, it goes right. And that's because the coordinate system just happens to be opposite for what the phone thinks is X and Y versus Nets blocks. Um, so, so as far as getting students to do this, this is just a, a, a short point that we can say, like, uh, ask how you might fix this and see what their ideas are. But the, uh, the, the easy way you can just do this is just negate the velocity x and velocity y. So we can just go ahead and grab uh, a subtraction block, and we can just do 0 minus. That, that's an easy way to take the negative. Uh, so we just do that for velocity x, velocity y. And now you can click on the blocks again to start them running. It looks like there's some messages there. OK, so now if I, I'll get in the camera. If you tilt it left, it goes left, right goes right, up goes up, down goes down. So uh, all the directions should be right. So now we just need to, because we've just been manually clicking this to start it or stop it. So we want, it, it, we want this to actually start whenever the game starts. So for that, we can just go ahead and uh, uh, we could, what I usually do is I just make this a separate event. You could just use the, the new game event, but I, I usually like to make it a separate one. So we can just go down here and make a, a new, get a, get a broadcast block from control. And then in the drop down, you can go down to new. And I usually just call this uh, initialized. Like the, the sensors have been initialized and you'll start receiving values. So uh, I just put that after listen to sensors. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's strange then. Yeah, but yeah, it, OK. So if you do have any problems, you can always just click blocks to run them explicitly. Apparently, the green flag was having an issue for some reason. Anyway, uh, we can snap these blocks back in here. So now, uh, after we set credentials and listen to the sensors, we just start the initialized. We broadcast the initialized event and the new game event. So when we receive initialized event, that means the sensors are initialized and we can start using the values. So we can grab a when I receive block from the control tab. Uh, note that there, it's not to be confused with the when I receive block from the networking tab. They're different colors. So you, you want a yellow one. Um, we go down here in the when I receive and you just select the initialized event that you had over here that we just made. So now if we click the green flag, it should start up the actual new game event because we uh, just back in the stage, we connected the new game event, which was disconnected before. And we have that initialized event, which starts the movement. So now we actually have the, the ball moving around and it can you know go places. If you fall into a hole, you automatically die and uh, the game is over. That part was already in the starter code. And so uh, the goal of the game is actually to navigate around the holes and get up to this, uh, this green flag icon over here. But uh, this is the basic running project, uh, just for the sensors. But um, as we saw in, uh, in the, the slides over here, uh, the finished project for the phone actually has this label that keeps track of the wins and losses. Well, the total number of games played and the number of games that you've won. And there's also this new game button, because you probably noticed uh, if you tried out the project that if you when you click the green flag, it starts up the game. And then if you fall into a hole, basically uh, the game is over and uh, you'll have to click the green flag again to restart it, which is a little bit annoying. So we can go ahead and make a button to do that automatically. And so for that, I mean, hang, hang on one second. Uh, let me add this. So, so has everybody caught up? Or, or do you need a few minutes to, to actually finish the, the game up till now before we 
go to the GUI buttons and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I have all the code in place, but it doesn't receive the the values from the sensor uh, for some reason. I double checked the device ID. I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, do you want to try screen sharing, and we can see if it's an issue with the code anywhere? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to hold the whole party, but we can quickly try that. Well, I was just seeing if it was something that we could fix quickly. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we can try that just real quick. And that'll give anyone else a little bit of time to catch up if they need it. Yeah, OK. Then that's quickly. Devin, if you were to save your project again and then we reload it, you know, copying and pasting our device ID that we carefully typed, could we quickly catch up to where you are now? Oh so, yeah, like if like if I can, uh, yeah, save save it as a new project and then distribute it out, yeah. or even just save it as it is. I think then we reload the page. I think I learned this from Dan Garcia. Oh okay, yeah, I can uh, I can go ahead and save where it is right now. Because while I was troubleshooting, I got a little bit behind. Thanks. Oh okay, yeah, it uh, should. I just saved it. You should just be able to reload the page. Okay, can you see my screen then? Uh, oh, oh, not yet. Sorry, I need to press another button here. So, okay. Oh, okay. So, what did it share, share now? Yeah, this one. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, that's. I mean, try to make it like like it is, uh, like you like you said. Do I see two okay. M's in accelerometer? No. <laughs> okay, I'm going back, but that might be a very simple. On the stage. Um, oh, that's, no, a K. So hard to that's a K. That's a K. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. That's yeah, that, that's uh, for me. Yeah, that's one issue with the run block. Um, if you actually misspell any of the sensor names, it'll send you back an error value, but the run block kind of discards it. You would have to check it explicitly. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, uh, if you go into the network tab, there's a there's a, another variable called error uh, over in the network uh, area. Yeah. Yeah. Can you click the checkbox next to error? Response oh, response timeout. Yeah. Uh, if, if there's a timeout in the amount of time it takes the uh, the phone to respond, it'll do that. Uh, so you just need to double check and make sure that the phone is like still awake. Don't let it go to sleep, or it'll disconnect. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, click on the the reset connection button just to be oh. sure. Connection reset. Connect. Yeah, and then try. Ah, yep. Ah, there yeah. we go. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, there's just some little little hiccups that we have to fix every now and then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me go back to sharing. Uh, Chrome, that's the right one, I think. Okay, so uh, running your code after save. Oh, good, the saving. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so if you're if you're behind, you can just reopen that link that was uh, in the chat earlier. Um, uh, the the project, I can copy it again. Yeah, so if you're behind, you can reopen that project. It should be updated to where it is right now. Okay. Can I to do a forceful reload? You know, the Shift F5 on Windows or uh, Shift K oh, R yeah. on uh, Mac OS. Yeah. So if you don't know how to do that, you can just close the tab and uh, reopen the link directly. Uh, well, that might work. I'm not sure. That might be browser dependent, whether it caches that or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, so from here, we were just going to get a little bit into the uh, GUI controls that you can do. So we're just going to grab another run block over here. 
and switch it over to phone IoT. And now we'll be in the display area. So when we're working with custom controls, because you might want to, you know, click the green flag to restart the project, you know, several times, you don't want to layer controls on top of controls. So the first thing that we'll do is call this clear controls RPC. And then we can just uh, copy the device down there. So then if you run this, this will just wipe out all the controls on the device. Let me just uh, do that. There we go. Uh, and you can just click it to run it, make sure it's working. Uh, but you don't have any, uh, I just realized you don't have any controls on the screen, so it won't look like it does anything. Uh, so we just, uh, we can just duplicate that block and go down to display. And we'll just start by adding a button. So we can go over, put device in there. And then you just give an X, Y position for the button. These are percentage of the screen width and screen height, respectively. Uh, so we're width and height values. That's because uh, a lot of phones have different aspect ratios and uh, we want it to work as close as possible uh, on different devices, even if they have different aspect ratios. So they're all relative scales. So you can put it uh, like 20% of the width in and then maybe like 30% of the height down. And then we'll just take up 50% of the width and 50% of the height from there. So that'll just be the size of the button. So X, Y, width, height. And you can just put text on the button. So we can just call this one uh, new game. And so if you click on those blocks to run them, you'll see that there is now a, a button on your screen uh, called, that uh, should be blue by default and says new game on it. And if you click on it, it'll change colors. And that kind of indicates that you clicked on it. But of course, nothing happens right now because we didn't tell it to do anything. So still, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's the best no op button money can buy. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, to, to actually get it to do something, we'll need to specify these options. And just at this point, I'd like to uh, highlight that you can right click on any RPC uh, that you have selected with a runner call block and go to help. And this will give more detailed information about um, how to use it. And also just down here, there's a, there's a link that you can click that'll just take you over to the documentation for the RPC. And so you can see right here, there's this uh, add button. And this, uh, this actually has more detailed information because before you just saw this, uh, and this, this information wasn't shown. So this, uh, this is the, the official documentation for actually all the servers, uh, all the services that we have available. But specifically, phone IoT in the display category, you'll see this one called Add Button. And you can just, uh, you can just click on that link uh, from Right Click Help, and that'll take you over here. It's uh, editor.netsblocks.org slash docs, D-O-C-S. And so you can see the options, there are just additional options, and you can specify an event. That's, that's one of the things that you can do. So that's the, the name of a message type to be sent each time the button is pressed. Uh, you must call listen to GUI to actually receive the messages. So uh, that's another RPC that we'll have to call. So we know that we can specify a, a value called event. And the, the value that we pass for that is the name of a message that it's going to send us. So we can just do, uh, we can just call the, call the event new game button. And so we want to pass that to the options. And it's expecting, it's expecting structured data, which is basically like key value pairs. And that means it's actually another list of list kind of things. So we'll just put that there. The event for the button is new game button. So now if we go down to uh, the network tab, we'll need to make a message type for that. So we'll just copy that name, new game button. And it doesn't have any fields. Uh, it act, well, it does pass fields, but we don't need to accept the, accept them. So just new game button, and then don't have to specify anything else. So just make sure that you spell that correctly, and then that'll make that new message type. So, uh, but we saw in the documentation over here. Oh, the zoom in the way. Zoom is getting in the way. Uh, in the documentation over here, you have to call phone IoT, listen to GUI to actually receive them. So that's just a, a little bit of a boilerplate thing that we just have to do. And that's because you might want to have multiple projects listening to the same phone 
So it's not enough just to say whoever adds the button receives the event. You might want to have multiple people receive the events. So we actually have to do a separate thing to register each program that's wanting to listen to the controls to explicitly say that. So then we can just copy the device down here. Now, we, if we snap this back together, we can click on the blocks to run them again. You should see the button disappear because that's when we did clear controls and then reappear with the, uh, the new button. So now if we go over to the false sprite, phone is connected. Oh, is there any indication that like the, the actual phone is connected to a client running NetsBlocks? Uh, there currently is not, no. Yeah, that's why there's that, um, that password uh, over here in the, the menu area. You can set if you're, if you're uh, for some reason, like um, in using phone IoT paranoid about other people connecting to your device and receiving like your sensor data. Uh, first of all, it only sends sensor data whenever it's in the foreground. Uh, so if you close the app or if you just put it in the background by pressing the home button, uh, they can't access any of your data. And also you can set a password so that even when it is in the foreground, they'll have to also know the password to be able to get it, to be able to get the sensor data. Okay, but uh, we can go ahead and grab another when I receive block over here in the ball sprite. If we go over here, we can select our, our new game button event that we made over here. And uh, let's see, where, where is the ball? I think it rolled off the screen. Uh, anyway, let me just stop that. So uh, whenever we receive the new game button, there's already this new game event. So we can just actually broadcast that event. So we can go down, oh, no, it's up here. Uh, in the control area, you can just grab a broadcast and you can just select new game. So now if we restart the game, oops, there we go. Okay, so it's rolling around a little bit laggy because I'm screen sharing, but if I press the button, it should restart the game and I'll try to get that kind of on the camera. So I can, I can roll around here and then just whenever I press the, the new game button, oops. Oh, there's that lag. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whenever I press the new game button, it'll just start a new game. So I can just fall into a hole and I can restart it without actually having to press the green flag button up there. Okay. And then, oh, I don't think this is supposed to be shown. Let me just uh, fix that. There we go. Okay. So now we actually have a button and we're able to receive events. So let's see, I guess the last thing that we'll want to do uh, to have the mostly finished features uh, of the, the original project is add the, the label, the label to the phone IoT uh, device screen that will show the score. So to do that, we're actually going to have down in the network tab, this time we'll need a call block. So when you do, when you add a control to the screen with like add button, add image display, in this case, we'll be using add label. Uh, it'll actually return the ID of the control it creates. And you can use that to manipulate the control later on after creation. For the button, we didn't need to do that. But for the label, we will because we'll need to be updating the text on it uh, as we go. So we can just go down here with the call block uh, down to phone IoT over to display, uh, add label. Yeah, Having, so you can just uh, copy. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, let me just ask the audience whether anybody needs more time to catch up uh, with the button, the start new game button, or, or are there any questions? Because we are not running oh, yeah, long yeah, time. So if, 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 the, if you need to wait a couple of minutes for everybody to catch up, that, that's OK. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a um, save again. Oh, sure. Yeah, let me just uh, save. I got uh, okay, tied so up making the new message type. I didn't know if you deleted the, what was it? The fields um, parameter or something? Oh, yeah, if you don't put anything, that's fine. But also you can uh, hit the little left arrow to get rid of them. Uh, we did that for the new game button event because we don't need any values from it. OK, thanks. And yeah. um, you've saved it or are you doing it? Oh, yeah, it, it should be saved. You can reload. Great, thanks.
Okay. Did anyone else uh, have any luck getting the um, the button to work? Yeah, this is or kind did of the. Did not get the button working? This is the disadvantage of, of virtual workshops because in a normal workshop, you would be just walking around and helping out people. But now if you don't ask for help, you have no idea whether you need or not. <laughs> yeah. The sign of any connection. Oh, for uh, were you getting updates for the um, accelerometer? Good job. Well, by finishing, do you mean actually getting to the green flag or just falling yeah. the hole? <laughs> green flag, green flag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, just a game over event. Good job. This is fun. Cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Derek, uh, were there... Oh, I think someone connected to my phone. Oh, right, because I, <laughs> the project I saved has my ID. I, I should have expected that. <laughs> Uh, you can win a yeah. whole bunch of games at the same time. Right, yeah. Okay, so yeah, if anyone reloads the project, just replace my ID with your ID. <laughs> okay. Let me, That'd be uh, a fun game, though, trying to win multiple at once since the holes are <laughs> positioned <yeah>. randomly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's yeah. a challenging game. Right. Yeah, so if anyone's still having trouble, just let me know in the chat. Otherwise, we can uh, move on and just finish the label, and then we can go with wrong IDs. Location. Oh, if you if you put the wrong ID, oh yeah, if you put the wrong ID, you'll get some kind of error back uh, from the server. It'll probably just say that the device doesn't exist. Uh, it, yeah, if you check the uh, that little in the networking tab, that error variable right here. That's a uh, bad things happen if this is not empty. <laughs> okay. So I guess just finishing off the, the label thing. Uh, for this one, it's uh, it's another control. So you need an X and Y value and it's, it's the same coordinate system. So we can just kind of arbitrarily. Oh, okay. Yeah, and in a minute we'll uh, we'll like have the project in a mostly finished state, and we can work on seeing if anyone needs any help for uh, finishing things up, or I can demo some other projects, and we can just see uh, some other things that it's capable of. And after we fix the problem, yeah, so uh, we can just put the button just kind of arbitrarily at uh, x equals twenty, y equals five. Uh, five is near the top of the screen, and then we can just start it out with. Uh, some default text, which is formatted in the same way that we'll format the other messages later. So we can just do one uh, zero of zero games, plural. Uh, and that'll just, if we call this, it should just put a, a little label on your screen. Oh, I almost dropped it. Uh, kind of small text right now, uh, but you should see one zero of zero games as a little label. And you see it uh, it returned control dash two is the name of the uh, the name of the control. So we'll need to make a variable to hold that. So back in variables, just make a variable and we can just call it uh, like score label. So now right under the uh, add button, we'll just set the score label to add label. So whatever add label gives us back, we'll just set that to add add label uh, score label. So now you can just uh, click on these blocks again to run them, or you can click the green flag, should be all the same. And then uh, let me stop that for now. OK, so now we actually have the label, and it appears on the game. But we need to actually do the scoring. So that's, uh, that's going to be pretty easy. We can just go over to the ball sprite. Uh, just in the skeleton project that we started with and in the save files that we've uh, sent out uh, as we've gone, there's the uh, there's already this when I receive one and when I receive game over. So those events we can just attach directly uh, any logic we want to do when we win. So we're keeping track of the, oh, sorry, I got sidetracked. We need to make variables for the number of games played and the number of games won. Uh, so we can just make uh, games played variable and uh, games won variable. 
and we'll just uh, start by setting those to zero. So games played is zero. You can duplicate that and then select the games one. So you just want, want both of those to be zero. We can just, actually, we can put them at the top. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so that, then it just keeps all the set variables kind of together. OK, so games played starts at 0, games 1 starts at 0. And now over here, uh, when we receive the 1 event, uh, when we win the game, you can actually change the number of games 1 by 1. And also, you can duplicate that. Uh, you also played a game. So you won a game and you played it. You can increment both of those values. And then when you die, so game over, uh, that just changes the number of games played by one. So you can just uh, just drag over that one change block or right click and duplicate it. It's a, uh, yeah, if you just right click on it, there's this duplicate option here. Okay, so now we'll actually keep track of the scores. So like if I restart the game and I go over here and I lose, games played goes to one, games one stays at zero. And if I do it again, it should go to two. Um, uh, but you see, it's not going to update automatically on the, um, the phone IoT display, of course. So we need to go back over to network, grab another call block, switch it over to, uh, sorry, grab another run block, uh, switch it over to phone IoT, and then we'll go back down to display. And now there's these other ones, uh, other RPCs that we haven't used before. So we're going to be using set text. And that takes the device ID which is that same thing we've been using this whole time. And then ID is actually the ID of the control. So uh, the control we want to modify is that label. And you can remember over here on the stage, the, the label we assign to the score label variable. So you can just drag over your score label right here. And let me just hide these variables. And then, uh, and then you just need to put the text that you want right here. We have in the operators tab a block called join, which is basically just string concatenation. So we want the same formatted message as we had before, which was where we had like one zero of zero games. So we'll just start out by saying one space. That'll be the zero, basically. The, we'll leave that blank for now. Uh, space of space. That's going to be the other number. And then games plural, I keep forgetting. So then we can just slot in the variables. Uh, games one, games played. There we go, down here. So I'll just generate, oh, we can bring it out here and make sure that it's doing the right thing. Yeah, one, zero, two games. Yeah, so we just slot it in here, put it right there, run out of space on the area. <laughs> OK, so that, that'll happen whenever we win the game. Uh, we also want to do it whenever we do game over and we just change this value. So you can um, just right click and duplicate it over here. There's uh, better ways to do this, actually. We can make like custom blocks, and we can put this inside it and uh, get rid of the code duplication. But uh, for now, it's just one, one block, so we can just leave it like it is. So now if we restart the game, and we go over here and fall into a hole. You can see on the uh, on the screen it went to one zero of one games. And if I fall into another hole, now it's zero of two games. So yeah, you have the uh, the label updating as we expect it to. And um, it looks like we're if we want to have questions and little bug fixes in the end, we won't have much time for it. But there's also uh, just to mention it, if you look in the documentation, uh, there are other things that you can do, like change the style of the button, the color, text color. You can rotate it into rotate it to landscape, change the font size, uh, all kinds of things. For labels, there's things like uh, left, right, and center justified text, uh, things like that. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, customizability for the controls uh, that we just don't have time for. So I guess in the last few minutes, are there uh, any questions that anyone has about uh, phone IoT or nets blocks in general, uh, the project, any issues? Ah, OK, so the documentation, if you grab 
uh, one of these run blocks, like if you if we have this phone IoT set text selected and we just want to know what it's doing, we can just right click on it and go to help. And that'll bring up this little pop up box, which has kind of the general information, like the description of the of what it does, and then also all of the values. But if you want like really detailed stuff, you can click on this link down here and that'll take you over here. Uh, currently, it, it's trying to link directly to the correct RPC, but that's uh, currently not working. So we, we were wanting the, um, the set text one. So once you get on that page, you can just control F uh, set text and that'll, uh, that'll bring you down here. So then you have like uh, a little bit more detailed information and all, all of the RPCs are collected together here. So it's uh, just easy to see everything. Some other applications. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, let me just go over here, close this. I'm just going to, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, if you get the listen to sensors block and you don't specify any sensors, that'll just stop it from sending messages. I'm just doing that because I'm going to uh, switch over to uh, demo some other projects that we have. So I'll just go ahead and stop it listening. I'll take another save. Uh, in case anyone uh, got uh, a little behind. Uh, and you can just catch up here if you just reopen the, the same project file as before. So now let me just open up some other projects. Uh, let's see. Well, there's one that we can do that's still using the accelerometer. So this one's actually using the GNU plotting service uh, called Chart uh, that's built into NetsBlocks. And it'll actually connect to the device. Hopefully, I put the right ID. Yeah. So this one, it's receiving the same accelerometer values, but now it's uh, it's actually just accumulating them into into these lists, uh, x values, y values, z values, and then it's using the plotting service to plot them. So if I like rotate the device around, you can see all the values change, and I can try to do some kind of sinusoid thing, and we can do some kind of uh, numerical modeling. Um, sorry. Uh, some like uh, uh, modeling and numeric um, analysis on uh, some sensor values that we received directly from the raw data. So then that one is just another example of the um, the accelerometer. Oh, sorry, no, not import. Uh, now I'll just uh, go ahead and stop listening to the sensors, and then let's open another one. Let's see, what's a, what's a good one? Oh, compass. Here's a nice one. So let me just make sure the ID is right. Okay, so this is a little compass app that we put together. And so um, what it's doing is it's just gonna point in the direction uh, that I'm supposed to be facing. And so I can like rotate it around. It's kind of hard to see. I'll, I'll try to angle, angle the thing a little bit, but I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and like point it over here it's going north and we get that value. And then also on the actual device display, we can get like the, uh, the direction, like the, the, the bearing or heading. He yeah, I think it's the heading. <laughs> and then also just like the uh, north, northeast, east, that kind of thing, that little string. If there's no wind, heading and bearing are the same, at least for an airplane. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I keep getting confused between the two. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then let's see. Oh, let me just stop the sensors again. Let me see. Is there anything else? Any other good ones that I can do? Oh, uh, show show the exercise tracker because we typically we only have two minutes, and that's kind of a fun one, even though it's hard to demo. But just show it. Yeah, let me just make sure it's. Uh, yeah, because uh, the I, I've been demoing this on the iPad, and it doesn't have a location sensor, so I need to switch over to this uh, this other device. Let me just make sure it's working oh, over here. Is that the right ID? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, okay. So we also have this one that we uh, we actually taught in uh, to some um, uh, K-12 students in a summer camp recently, which is a, a little fitness tracker app. So I'm in, uh, just as a note, I'm indoors in a multi-story building. So the uh, it moving around right now is not exactly accurate. <laughs> But that's just because if I'm outdoors, the GPS is better. But uh, you can see I can hold this up here. Oh, 
Okay, so just uh, I'll try to guide through some of these components. It's kind of hard to see. There's like glare. Okay, so there's a. Uh, okay, actually, that's uh, really hard to see. I'll just use the image that I have in the slides. Okay, so this image right here, I'll just bring it over here, um, make it a little bit bigger. So this is the same thing that you're seeing on the phone. It's just you can't see it because of the glare, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so this is just an image display uh, on the that you've added to that we've added to the uh, phone IoT screen, and then we populate it with an image that we get from the Google Map service, uh, which is another uh, service that's available as like a you can just grab a call block, go down to Google Maps, and then do Get Map, and you can uh, that just gives you an image. You can send it over to the phone. And then this is a text box that we use for uh, storing the total distance covered. We have start and stop buttons. And then, um, and then the actual location is provided by the location sensor on the device. You have to have location turned on. But it's, uh, it's, another, it's another really easy one, because we, uh, we just go, oops, I clicked it. Uh, but it's just uh, listen to sensors. One of the options you can specify is location. So we're just receiving location updates every 2,000 milliseconds. And then uh, let's see, over in the sprite, we just, uh, when I receive location, and it gives you the latitude, longitude, bearing, which might actually be the heading, because <laughs> I was getting confused on what they were. <laughs> Sorry about that. But then uh, also the altitude. And then we can just use some Google Map service, point in direction of the bearing, or uh, and then we just do the uh, the actual distance calculation. That's all in a custom block. But yeah, you can see it's pretty easy just to get sensor data. You just need to specify, listen to the location every so and so often when I receive location. All right, Devin, thank you. Uh, I think we are out of time. Somebody's asking for yeah. the presentation. Can you put it in the ch chat quickly before people uh, log off? Because I'm not sure oh, we can yes. upload it to the conference website. Yeah, let me uh, uh, share. We should be able to put it on like slide share and then link to it from there. Um, from like oh. if you want to get on the conference website, I mean. Oh, the actual. Uh, do you mean the video or just the present? Oh, uh, oh, you mean add it to the, yeah. The the yeah the uh, workshop materials. Okay, yeah. so there's a way to put it up there. Okay, so so please check yeah. the the conference website. We'll upload it. Uh, yeah, and I just put a link to the the PowerPoint presentation uh, in the chat that you can also use, and I'll I'll add it to the uh, the actual conference page for this uh, this web uh, workshop. Yeah, but thanks everybody. All right, thank you, Devin. Great job. Awesome, thanks. Loved it. Mm -hmm. great. Yeah, great. Thanks for showing. <laughs>